Three is our lucky number today. It's time for episode 300 of the Three Point Podcast. You know what, guys? We've had a lot of hot takes, both good and bad, since our debut in 2017. It comes up periodically, but hard to believe that we put 300 of these silly things together. I think we've said it a few times when we hit these milestones. I don't know if any one of us, the three of us, knew what to expect when we started this thing. Was it going to last a week, a month? A few months, a year. I think we we thought it'd be something, but 300. I know. Yeah. I mean, it is pretty cool. We've we've talked to people, whether it was Tony Nash with AZ, you know, a friend of the podcast, or other people who do podcasts. A lot of people have the idea to start a podcast. The first thing is actually getting it going. Mm-hmm. The second thing is sticking with it, and for us to stick through it through COVID, through all of our job career changes, right. moves, and you retiring, and just everything. You know, not not to pat ourselves on the back, but to be doing this for 300, hey man, that's that, that's something to be said. Yeah, it's a, it, it's it's impressive. It's also kind of psychotic, so <laughs> it's a little bit of both. <laughs> um, but yeah, 300 episodes. This snuck up on us. It feels like we were just doing episode 250 like last week. I, we right. normally do something special for these big episodes. I mean, we got a great episode planned, but yeah, uh, it just means we we'll have to do a double big at episode 400. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. But hey, hey, we're not going to pat ourselves on the back. Nobody else is anyway. But, you know, <laughs> right. I, I think it is pretty cool that uh, when we started out, we knew that local people that are, you know, apt to listen to pods would uh, would check us out. But what what is amazing to me, and it's really gratifying, I know you guys hear it. I mean, you're in Carolina. You talk to workmates, Matt, you talk to, or, and Jared, you talk to work people and other friends that are spread throughout the country. It's just pretty cool that, they check in with us once a week, you know, I, I, I just rare, very gratifying. Yeah, it is. And, you know, like you said, the, the local people that we know, listen, especially Corona fans, you oh, know, yeah. Owasso, you know, that area, we know they listen, but it is, it is kind of cool once in a while when someone randomly from work will like hit me up and be like, Oh, I listened to your guys' podcast, you know, and then tell mm-hmm, me, right. uh, give me a comment or a friend that I, maybe I haven't talked to in a little while. We'll send a message and be like, I listened to your guys' pod last week, you know, blah, blah, blah. It, it is kind of like, oh, cool. You know, thank yeah. you. I appreciate that. That's, yeah. It's fun. Well, let's make it official. We just want to let everybody know that uh, we really thank our partners. And we are presented by Memorial Healthcare's Wellness Center. Check out memorialhealthcare.org for everything they offer, including discounts for this upcoming year. also want to thank our other partners, AZ Branding Solutions, Jacobs Insurance Agency, uh, Corey Shook and Associates Real Estate Services, Nelson House Funeral Homes, Rivals Tap House and Grill, and Success Group Mortgage and Servicing. You know, we're going to talk about the big event that happened last mm-hmm. night, raising a lot of money for Corona Athletics. But, you know, that sponsor list I just went through, most of those people were there. I mean, it was great to see that support. So uh, in our catch-up portion, I guess we'll just start it off. The first annual Golden Black Night last night uh, took place at the Owasso Knights of Columbus. I was given an award as... Uh, an old timer, the Golden Alumni <laughs> Award, the first ever. But uh, I know I, I talked to Jared at least two or three times where he said, man, I can't believe how how this is awesome. I mean, I wasn't expecting this and it really was. They did a great job, didn't they? Yeah, they really did. It, it was a it was a great night. I'm looking forward to, you know, it's, still, it's something they should be doing, you know, until the end of time. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it really went well. Uh, great turnout, good food, good drinks, uh, you know, great silent auction items. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you got to consider yourself pretty lucky, man, that you, I mean, for being the guinea pig of this whole thing, it really went off without any hitches. So, yeah, it was just awesome. I mean, you deserve it. It's, uh, we did a little quick little video shout out for you. It's funny, as I was going uh, through the archives to find some podcast moments, I realized how little you talk and how much me and Matt talk. It was like a needle in a haystack. I was like, holy cow. It's like, we never even talked on this freaking thing. But uh, yeah, it, you just had one great career and it's awesome that uh, everybody was there to kind of pay homage to it. And I'll be honest, Matt, before you jump in, your quick little minute, minute and a half was probably the only presenter that landed all their jokes. It, it was my dad and Michael George did one. It was good. I thought it was hilarious. You know, it was some inside jokes that probably only Ted probably understood. So, um, but it, it went great. But yeah, Matt, I just thought that was funny that your your minute thirty video man yeah. it landed a few different times. Well, I, I appreciate that because you guys know, you know my my jokes are few and far between. I, I try and stick to re- relaying the facts, I guess. Yeah, whether they're actually guy. truthful or not, you know. Uh, 
but no, it, that was fun. I, I was, it was cool to put that video together. I'm glad we were able to do that and throw out some highlights from, from Ted's career um, from the pictures and everything. And, you know, the, the couple little videos that I saw, it did look like a really cool event and it goes to show Ted, you, you, you led this off with talking about the partners of our podcast. Yeah. A lot of them were big supporters of that event. It just goes to show that we've talked about it before, whether it's with the football season or other sports or other things going on. The Corona community is really special. It is really cool when, whether it is following a sports team or some sort of club that's doing really well, or they put together an event like this, they come out and, mm -hmm. um, and they'll, they'll donate some money to a good cause. And, uh, we, I don't know if we need to like to actually say how much money was raised, but a good amount of money was oh. raised to a good cause. And we can say it was over 10 grand. Wow. Yeah. So a, a nice chunk of change going to the Crown athletics and, you know, for a good, uh, again, for a good cause and to honor one of the, the good Corona Cavaliers, one of the best Corona Cavaliers and yourself, Ted. Um, uh, it's just a really cool event. It would have been fun to be there. Um, so I'm glad that, you know, I could hear the update from you guys, see the pictures and everything because, yeah, you deserve it. But, uh, yeah, I will say uh, the the little jokes that I made, I, I came up with those off the cuff. So I'm, <laughs> I am going to pat myself on the back for that one that they actually landed. Because we, I was just gonna say like, congrats, you know, thanks for everything. Right. But I was like, no, I gotta throw a couple jokes in, you know, I gotta try and get some laughs. I was that I texted Jared, <laughs> but like before the event when I knew it was about starting. I, I was, I told yeah. him I was like, let me know how that video goes. I'm very curious because I was like, I hope I don't swing and miss on those. Right. If, if, no, I, if it's like I, crickets, I it I'm gonna a, be like, delete the video. Delete. <laughs> it was kind of a tough crowd. Ted had pitched the idea, or Sam Bowell, who did a great job by the way. I yes. mean, he, he's gonna be a golden alumni someday, someday down the road. Right. Um. He threw out the idea originally of doing a roast, and it was just a it was a tough crowd for a roast. Yeah. So I was worried, Matt, when that video was about to play. I was like, "Man, this might this might you know have crickets." <laughs> but no, it went it went well. How was it for you, Ted? I mean, where did you ever tear up? What was your kind of highlight of the night? Right. Uh, looking back, Uh that's a good question. I will, I, just the whole thing to me just was kind of overwhelming. You know, it, it definitely yeah. humbles you. Uh, we all know all three of us have egos. I mean, we wouldn't be in this business if we didn't. But sometimes you have to put it in check and to see the turnout. And, and to second what, what Jared said, Sam Vowell, uh, the president of the Corona Athletic Club, went, went at this gung-ho, man. He went at it full bore. Uh, I think the best thing now that it's over, I don't have to see myself posted on social media on the heartbeat of Corona anymore. See your Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But it was it was... What to me was very cool was it, it was showing that Corona came out to support, like you were saying, Matt. I mean, they support their their school, their their extra activities. I mean, it was great. It was a packed house at the Knights of Columbus. Yeah. I mean, it was a, a packed house. And, you know, it caught me a little bit off guard because I was expecting some of the stuff that happened, like the, the video presentation you guys put together. I thought there was going to be something like that. And I knew George and John, my brothers who did a nice job, despite what Jared said. <laughs> I, didn't, no, I know. Don't twist the words. I All didn't right. say they did a bad it's a job. joke. Take a joke, man. <laughs> well, I don't need that narrative out there that I'm ragging on their, their comedy sketch. It was clever. I like was. Go ahead. Did no, you, just... did you expect, did you expect a roast or did you know going in, there wasn't going to be a roast? Cause I no. remember on the pot, on the podcast, you, you made it sound like you thought there was going to be a roast. I tried to discourage that in my okay. comments I made along the way. <laughs> so it was, it was better the way they did it. They did yeah, catch yeah. me yep. a little bit by surprise. You know, they brought me up on the, on the little stage thing front and center for most of the presentation. I wasn't expecting that. I thought maybe I'd be able to sit at my table and uh, listen to the present, you know, presenters and whatever they're going to say. And then I'd get my chance to come up and thank everybody. Right. That was what I had in my mind. But yep. instead I had to be on my toes because Sam was the MC and he's asking me questions about my career and this and that. And it threw me for a loop a but, little bit, but I, I think say, I did okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, it was funny. I, I, it's funny. You didn't know that was coming because I would have thought you prepped for it. Like you're just, I mean, you can tell you've got 40 plus years of on air mic experience and, and things like that. So yeah. yeah, you got, you did a good job. Thanks. Was man. it, was it pretty cool? Um, with the questions from Sam, uh, with the video that Jared and I put together or any other moments where, you know, the, the intent was like for you to reflect on your career, was it kind of cool to actually, cause you know, you think about all the games you've called, you think right. about the 300 podcasts that we've done. 
yeah. interviewing Alan Trammell and Bo Schembechler and, you know, just everything that you've done. But, you know, to actually sit there up on a stage or in an event like that, is it cool to actually truly reflect on everything you've done as you're heading towards, you know, retirement? Yeah, yeah, it was. And and again, it was it was very well done by Sam. He asked great questions and he, just exactly what you're talking about, you know, asking me, you know, who are who are my favorite interviews I've done, uh, favorite concerts, you know, and when, when it's going right off the dome, it's just like this right. podcast, you know, you're just you're just going into gear, just quickly throwing out things. If I'd have known the questions in advance, I'd have, I'd have probably had a few additions to my answers. Like my, my uh, son-in-law, Tom said, man, when you were talking about concerts, you know, we talked a little bit about Led Zeppelin and, and Queen and, you know, he, Sam is a big listener of our podcast. And he said, you know, I enjoy entertainment tonight, but what are your favorite concerts? You know, and I did talk about Queen and, and Led Zeppelin, but my, my son-in-law says, geez, I thought you would have said Paul McCartney. I went to Paul McCartney with them. And I said, well, yeah, I can't, I can't, you know, repeat every concert because there were so many and it was spur of the moment. You know what I right, mean? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah I, it is funny whether it's, yeah, the podcast here, you know, whatever. Sometimes after the fact, if you, if you think about a topic that you're talking about, you're like, oh, how did I forget that? I and, know, I know. And sometimes it just is what it is. But I, I will say it was funny. Um, again, friend of the podcast and a big supporter of this podcast and that event jim woodworth you know he's yes. with success group mortgage and servicing he texted jared and i after or during the event whatever and and said like that that the video was cool and he said how could you guys put that awaso karana game in there <laughs> he's like i'm still not over that and and i will say we could have made that video 20 minutes right because you know putting all your classic calls from radio jared probably going through and finding some funny stuff that you say in the podcast yeah. we could have made that thing longer but it was like you know, we didn't want to make it too long. We didn't want to take up the whole event, but it was like, let me, let, let's pick four or five right. good ones. I wanted to add one of mine and then one of Jared's. That was Perfect. kind of one thing. Perfect. Um, and, you know, a couple other big ones that I knew. Like, I know you always talk about that Owasso Corona game as like the one. I know you always talk about that St. John's game right? Um, in 92. So there were a couple. And then even though I know it was a Corona event, I've heard you mention before the Owasso softball state championship as being a really cool one. Mm -hmm. So I, I was kind of back and forth. I was like, this is a Corona event, but it's about his whole career. So mm -hmm. I was like, I think this is a, a cool one to put in there. But no, no. I, I did think it was, I was curious how, if it would be funny leading off with Owasso beating Corona. Right. <laughs> got, got to admit, there was a couple comments to me that said, what the heck? That, but it was mostly Woodworth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but but to tell you the truth it was the length of it was good i mean it it it, 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 could, to, it, it, it shouldn't have been any longer it no, was good yeah no. that, it, but, well, it didn't it didn't help me and matt that that was after about 45 minutes of talking then the video ran right, right before you gave your final so it was the perfect length uh, it, yeah. if, if it was any longer we might have lost the crowd Right. Cool. Well, I was picking up on that because, you know, then it, then the mics handed to me after the whole presentation, you know, and I had a I had a fairly not I won't say lengthy, but I had some people I wanted to thank in my family. And that's just what I want to do right now is just say, yep. hey, it was great to see the family come out. You know, we had, I think, uh, 14 family members and, uh, you know, it was just great to see. So a, a tremendous event. You guys did a nice job. I appreciate everything you did. Look, um, for the people that are watching, very nice plaque. <laughs> There it is. Out, right? That's very first, cool. First day annual. Added, and highlight of the night. Highlight of the, back there. Yeah, highlight of the got... night, Matt, was at the very end, we took a family picture. Ted <laughs> got down on one knee in front, holding that as if he was like a JV basketball player <laughs> holding a basketball in front of everybody. <laughs> that was the highlight. I need to see that picture ASAP. Yeah, that picture needs to be posted somewhere. <laughs> I'll, I'll get it to you. I'll get it to you. Jason Beldigan made me do it. But... Uh, <laughs> It was it was great. It was a great that event. Cool. A lot of fun enough to talk about right now. We got a big show for everybody out there, by the way. We got a couple of the great high school coaches having undefeated seasons. We got Matt Weigel of Chesanine coming up and Tim Beebe of the Langsburg Wolfpack. And we're going to be getting into that here right after a few messages. It's much more than a gym. It's the Memorial Healthcare Wellness Center. Stocked with a wide array of state-of-the-art cardio and strength equipment, the Wellness Center also offers a variety of fitness classes. Run, jog, or get your steps in on the raised sky track with views of the entire Memorial Campus. As part of your membership, enjoy the spa-like locker rooms with private showers, 
Also included is use of the steam rooms, saunas, and therapy pool. For more details, go online at memorialhealthcare.org or call 989-720-CARE. All right, it's time for the prep spotlight. We have a special one today, a couple of uh, great coaches in our area. We're going to start off here with Chesanine's head coach, Matt Weigel, undefeated 15-0, and coming off a big win on Friday night. Uh, I guess I'll just start it off, Coach. First of all, thanks for joining us. And second of all, how does it feel being 15-0? and uh, Well, yeah, thanks for having me, first of all. I uh, love the show. Um, it, it feels great. I mean, we couldn't ask for anything more when we started the season to be 15 and 0. Um, we, we hope uh, every game that we're going to put ourselves in a position to, uh, to be successful and to win the game and to, uh, to be able to win all 15, especially since we've had some, some battles, some tough ones, double overtime at OE overtime at Durand's uh, tough Lake Fenton team, the first game of the season, um, a close one at Mount Morris just last week. So to be able to, you know, handle those ups and downs and for our guys to figure out ways to win tough games. Uh, it's been, it's been really special so far. For sure. And I remember, you know, hearing you talk about the 15 and 0 and thinking about potentially running the table. I remember last year we talked to coach Morrill, Ling Lingsburg's coach last year. And I forget at what point it was in the season we talked to him, but they were, it was around this time they were yeah. undefeated. And we, we basically threw the question out is running the table something you guys talk about now? You know, obviously everyone before the season talks about goals, win your conference, you know, win your district, win your region, state championship. You set those benchmarks. But at this point, running the table and having a per perfect season is there. Do you guys talk about that or is it just a one game at a time type of approach? Yeah, no, it, it's absolutely a one game at a, at a time approach. And and so when we look at our goals at the beginning of the season, we take, uh, I, th I think maybe it's a little different approach uh, our goal is to simply get better every single day. And we, we really reduce that to every possession. We want to make sure we're competing every possession. And that's kind of how we, we evaluate how we played the night before, how we practice. Um, again, we hope that by getting better every day and by competing all the time, we'll put ourselves in positions to win games. Uh, but uh, these guys have not talked about being 15 and 0 uh, yeah. at all. Not not a single time. I think it's probably more pressure for us as coaches, uh, not wanting to let them down or not letting uh, anybody in the community down. But these guys, um, no, they're still silly before the games. They're right. you know they're 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 goofy during practice. Still, it's it's still really light. Uh, and then when we need to compete, we we focus on competing, and that's it. That's it. We 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 narrow it down just to that. Compete every possession. Uh, forgive me, Coach, but I actually haven't had the chance to watch you guys yet this year. But from Ted's Prep Spotlight every week and seeing Argus Press headlines, sounds like you got quite the stud in Mason Strzok. To somebody who hasn't seen him play, how would you describe his game and what makes him so good? Uh, Mason has – I would. he's got incredible footwork for the high school game. Uh, he can finish with both hands around the basket. Uh, I mean, he's he's 64% from two right now, wow. um, which is incredible. Um, and, and he's improved his shooting. He can step back. He can hit the three. Um, he's gotten much better from the free throw line as of late. He's got a nice mid-range game. So he's really, I mean, if you compare him to, um, you know, look at the college guys out there, he's he's a very skilled, undersized four. But for, for our, our level of high school basketball, 6'6", six, right. six, I mean, he's, he's perfect size. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to look at, you know, guys that are D2, D1, um, he's, that, he's that skilled four-man um, who can really finish well, who's got good footwork. Um, he's, he's, been, he's been great for us. He's having a special season as well individually. Uh, I think the coolest thing about Mason, though, is he'll be the first one to credit his teammates. Uh, he's totally unselfish. He'll be, he'll be the first guy to say it's my great teammates that have been setting me up and, and drawing out some, some, some pressure on him, and he's, uh, he's handling it great. He's doing a great job for us. But uh, he's, he's a special player, and he's having a great season. Well, let's talk, let's talk a little bit about your key players. You know, I, I know you got some good guards that can dish it off to Mason and, and do some damage themselves. Talk about some of the other players you got there helping out this year. Yeah, Nate Ferry, uh, if you haven't seen him play, um, he is tremendous defensively. I think he uh, – I'll feel confident in saying he's the best defensive player I've ever coached. Uh, he's absolutely one of the top, if not the best, that I've even ever seen in this league anyways. Um, the way he can pressure the ball, the way he, uh, you know, can, can time up his steals, 
Uh, and then what he does with it afterwards, absolutely. He's he set Mason up countless times, uh, whether it's pick and roll or breaking down a zone and, and finding the the soft spots and, and finding them. Um, he's been he's been terrific. He actually just broke our all time career steals record last night. Um, earlier this week, he broke the single game school record or, or tied it, uh, the single game school record. So um, he's having a, a tremendous season. Uh, our young, our juniors are really stepping up too. We graduated six seniors last year, and so we we weren't sure what we were going to look like uh, outside of Mason and Nate this year. Um, but we've got some uh, juniors that are stepping up there. They're bringing the success that they've had over the, uh, the the baseball season last year to these two guys, Max Volk, Brady Sager, on the regional baseball team last year, uh, both on the football team, which had a great. Uh, season obviously this fall and so they're bringing that success with them onto the basketball court as well they play with confidence they play super hard they're really competitive um you know, they've been really stepping up and helping us out uh luke barda uh he was a soccer guy for us and they've had tremendous success in the soccer program here the last couple of years as well uh, he's super consistent uh Braden florian i think he loved the state in rushing uh, if not pretty close to it um, he brings that football mentality onto the basketball court. He's a hundred miles per hour all the time. Um, and then we got some guys who are giving us really good minutes, uh, off the bench and, and, and kind of the end of our rotation with Dylan James and Eric Brancic. Eric is going to be one of the top, uh, high jumpers in the state. Dylan James is a senior for us and, and, and really, uh, just consistent and steady. And then we got guys who really bring the energy on the bench. So it's really, it's, it's been an 11 man effort. Uh, every single guy is, is, is playing their role uh, to perfection is that's what you need at this time of the year. Yeah. You've got to have that depth. I mean, you're, you're every team, if you're going to have success, you're going to have one or two superstars, you know, you've got leaders, guys that are yeah. going to lead the way, but you got to have that depth. You got to have absolutely guys that, you know, yeah, you're, you're, little injuries, but You've mm -hmm. got to have some some glue pieces, right? You got to you can't just play five guys in high school basketball. You've got to have some depth. You can't. You're right. You got to have guys who can who can come off the bench and, and who know their role. Uh, because, like you said, you're 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 a sprained ankle away from your team looking drastically different at the high school level. Uh, and so everyone's got to be prepared. Everyone's got to be ready to step up if, if needed. Yeah, I was I was when I in my playing days I was one of those bench players so I I take pride in me as well. off the bench yeah. and being that being that spark plug. Speaking me as of well. Those, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Speaking of those days, so when, when I played, it was the early two thousands. I graduated two thousand three from Corona, and so this was back before conference realignment and all that kind of stuff. Justinine yeah. was you know one of our rivals, of course. One of my favorite gyms to play in, honestly. Uh, I always think of Durand. And I always think of Chesanine as two of the gyms that I loved playing in because the fans, I mean, I'm telling you, you know, of course, yeah, everyone, all four of us know fans are right there on the court. I mean, yes. I remember, I remember a play vividly that I went to die for a loose ball. I ended up in like the lap of some parents in the first row. And I always think of, I don't know if it's changed, but back then the lighting was like kind of orange. You'd, yeah. you'd walk in and your eyes would have to kind of adjust a little bit. You know, it was it was like, I don't know if that's changed, but that's what I remember. So I want to ask you, you know, on top of the gym and the environment, the community support. We've we've talked about, you know, with the coaches that we have on the podcast, how huge it is in the smaller communities, seeing that gym packed, seeing them come out for other events, seeing them travel to away games. And Chesanine is definitely one of those communities. How cool is it for you to, to coach? in an environment like that gym you guys have, but seeing it, you know, a packed house all the time, whether you're home or away. Oh, no, it's awesome. And it's, it's huge. It's huge for us. It, it's, it's, it's huge for our players to, to look up and see their buddies uh, rooting them on and to see uh, their neighbors in the stands. Uh, it's absolutely big for us. And, and we've had tremendous uh, community support uh, over the last few years. It's just, it's grown and grown and grown since I've been here, which is, it's, it's just been awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, we, when we get the band in there, when it's a packed house and the student section, it's loud, it's orange, uh, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's, it's, I think it's intimidating and, oh, and yeah. for us and for our guys, uh, they love it. They, they yeah. feed off of it. So we, I, mean, I can't say enough about, uh, the students who come back and cheer their players on the alumni that come back and cheer, uh, their school on, and then just the parents and members of the community who just want to show, uh, show support for our athletics here. It's, it's been great. Uh, we love it. I, I can't wait to see what that gym will be like. I, I mean, I, I'm not a coach. I'm not on the team. Projecting forward, you guys are going to have a great record heading into districts at home. Should be an awesome crowd uh, filled with a lot of orange, like you said. Uh, I have a question about something you sent us before the pod. You sent us kind of the record 
books that you keep. And I really appreciate that. I remember my junior year of high school, a new football coach came Uh-oh. in. Oh, his lights went out. <laughs> there, there we go. go. Wasn't and, moving enough. There we go. So my junior year of high school, our coach, I'll give him a shout out, Kyle Robinson came in. We didn't have any school records. And he took it upon himself to really put together a thorough, you know, stat sheet. Why was that important for you to do? And do you think Mason Strunk can maybe someday keep climbing those record books and maybe be the all-time leading scorer? I'm not sure how close he is right now, but uh, something to keep an eye on. Yeah, no, uh, no. It's a similar situation uh, with what you mentioned there with Kyle Robinson. So uh, when I got here, there was a um, a, a, a pretty basic uh, record book that was done by, um, at the time, our AD, Bobby Sager, which I thanked him for. So that was kind of the jumping off point. And then as it got now, and this is my 10th year, and, and I see, you know, this is Mason's fourth year on on varsity, I'm like, God, he's got to be close to a thousand, right? Let's let's start really doing some math and digging in here last year. And I'm like, all right, he's got a shot at a thousand. Well, who are the other thousand point scorers? Well, we don't have a list of it. So at that point, I was like, if we're gonna acknowledge Mason for scoring a thousand points, I want to acknowledge as many other players as I as I can at this point as well. And it just snowballed from there. It became kind of almost yeah. an addiction for me. Uh, it's definitely a stress reliever. Um, yeah. you know, it's, it's, I'm involved in basketball without having to think about uh, the team and all the stresses that we have to go through. Uh, so uh, it's been something I've really enjoyed doing, and I've gotten a lot of help along the way. Rick uh, Wesley, um, a, a, a Chesting My grad, friend. former coach at uh, Grand Valley State, has sent me some of the stuff. He did the same thing, kept records here. Uh, so it's been cool. And um and I'm still finding out more and more and more. It's 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 unofficial. I mean, it's there's more out there. It's it's hard to find, but it's been really cool to see some of these things. And uh, as far as Mason goes, uh, Brent Molnar, um, who man, I never got to see him play, um, but I've heard he was just incredible. I don't know if you guys he was, and that's what I've heard. <laughs> um, he he's the all-time leading scorer at 1440. Oh wow! One, I think. <laughs> So Mason would have to average about 30 more points a game throughout the whole season. And I, I don't know if he's going to get – I, ho- I yeah. sure hope he does because that means we're going to win some games. Deep right. playoff run. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um, but I, I think Mason's got a shot at finishing second. He would have to overthrow Dave Petrosky from the 60s, uh, who also had an incredible uh, career scoring number. So uh, it's been really cool. Um, and um, I, I'm, I'm excited to continue to do it. I'm excited to see some of these records change. I have one final. Sorry, Matt. I was going to jump in. I have have one final question, and I know Matt does too. Um, Should have probably started this at the beginning. You said you've been there ten years. What's uh, give us your background, your 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 walk to Chesonine? Yeah, so I I um I graduated from Nouvelle um, in uh, '06, and uh, as you guys mentioned, I was uh, just an average high school basketball player. (laughs) Uh, but I will say we had some, I'll, I'll kind of throw some names out there. We, we had a, a, a pretty good group uh, that 05 season. Blair White uh, was our, one of our senior guards who obviously went on to Michigan State and then played for the Colts. Uh, Bo Hoffman, who went and played at Southern Illinois, football to Southern Illinois. Uh, Tony Ari, who then played for his dad at SVSU. Um, Sean Dwyer, who uh, is now currently uh, one of the head assistant coaches at uh, Loyola with uh, Drew Valentine. Um, so there are some there are some guys out there who are pretty skilled, pretty talented. But I was just I was just your average uh, player in high school. Um, and then uh, when I uh, graduated, I kind of stepped away from the game and um, I'm a teacher. So when I was coming back into teaching, I saw Chesney had an opening for a teacher and a basketball coach. And I thought, why not? And Bobby Sager took a chance on me. And so my first teaching job and my first coaching job was here at, at Chesney. So. Uh, it's been an incredible, uh, incredible journey for 10 years. And I mean, uh, as I'm beginning to find out, 10 years is, is pretty long for high school basketball coaches. Usually um, the, the stint is shorter than that. So I don't, right. I don't know how long they'll keep me here, but um, it's been it's been great so far. It is, especially in, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, in some communities where you don't have year in and year out all state caliber stud players coming in year in and year out. You know, we, we grew up in an area too, where, you know, it kind of goes in waves. You might have a three, four, five year run, but then you might have a three or four year run where talent is just maybe down a little bit. So, you know, sometimes it's just kind of the name of the game, but it falls on the coach. And, Absolutely. You know, you, <laughs> yes. you, might, you might lose your job because of it, but no, it sounds like you, you are running an awesome program there. So congrats on that. 
uh, what, so two things hearing you talk about the record book, I appreciate the attention to detail because I've always thought that it is cool. I think even in a small community, even a place like Chesney, Corona, you know, wherever, um, the record book is cool. I mean, you, you put in the time and you, you put in the work and you break some school records. Of course, it's not an NFL record. It's not an NBA record, an NCAA basketball record. It's cool to hold a school record at, you know, somewhere that you, you put in the work. So, and if you're going to do it, you want to make sure that you're doing it right. You don't, you don't want to say that someone's breaking a record. And then some dude from 20 years ago is like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I scored 20 points, you know, whatever the record is. So I I appreciate the attention to detail on the, um, the record book, but also the the question I want to ask you when you were breaking down your roster earlier, I was hearing you list track and field, baseball, football, and other sports, you know, in your opinion as a coach and a former athlete, um, what is the value you think to the, your athletes playing multiple sports? You know, it seems like a big thing you hear about with athletics now are our players kind of focusing on one sport, only playing basketball year round, only wrestling year round, you know, whatever they're into. I personally think it is so valuable to play multiple sports for a number of reasons. But do you think that is helping your team success? having a bunch of guys who play baseball, track and field and other things? Oh, absolutely. I think it's huge. I think everybody should play as, as, as many sports as they can, as they're interested in playing. I, I think it's, it's, it's great for the overall development of a student athlete. Um, you know, number one for us, again, we talked about, you know, how we, we always emphasize competing every possession. Well, if you're in multiple sports, if you're playing baseball in the spring and you're doing football in the fall and then you come to us uh, in the in the winter for basketball, you've competed year round now. Right. right. And so that's that's a whole year's worth of you learning lessons from competition. And that's 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 big. Right. Mental toughness is something we talk about all the time. And you're training that year round if you're playing multiple sports. Uh, you get uh, you work in different muscles. Your your work your brain is working differently when you're on the soccer field or the pitch, I should say, uh, yeah. versus the the basketball court. Um, and, and that's that's huge as well. Uh, and then it's also if you're a guy who man, you throw a lot into basketball, and that's that's your main thing. Um, it, to take some pressure off by playing a secondary sport, I think that's good for you know your mental health as well. Take a little break from something that you've thrown so much into, and focus on something else. And, you know, look at Mason Strzok, who uh, for all the time, I mean, he's been in a, he's been in a gym for the last four years, every day for the last four years. Well, he's he's got Division two football offers right now. He took a chance and played football last year, decided to come out again this fall. And, and he's got now two Division two football offers and, and one he's seriously considering. So you never know. Uh, yeah. And I think it's I think it's so important, especially for these you know smaller schools like us where uh, the the athlete pool isn't always as deep right. as some of the bigger schools, you know, it helps your community and your athletic program so much by playing multiple sports. Yeah. One last question for me, coach, then we'll, we'll let you get out of here, get to practice. Um, in the same vein, I mean, Cheston just had a great football season. Uh, you guys are putting together one hell of a basketball season. Does it seem like you guys are really kind of, you know, moving forward in, in a positive direction? Do you feel like the excitement around these sports programs in the hallways, you know, under the lights on Fridays, in the gym on Tuesdays and Fridays? Is that something you guys are really noticing, kind of a new wave uh, of talent coming through Chessening? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's it's it's, it's a special. I mean, all, all, all fall we're excited about soccer and we're excited about football. Um, well, the winter time, you know, we have a, a, a really solid wrestling program as well. And, and of course, we're, we're, we're putting together a decent basketball season. So there's excitement there. And then you turn to the in the fall where, you know, I didn't even mention track. We, we have a, I mean, I, a state powerhouse in, in track here. Yeah. Um, and then of course the baseball team. So yes, it's, it's, it's building. And, and, and the, and I think that's where we get our, we're getting more and more excitement for every sport and we're seeing our gym, uh, here in the wintertime on a Tuesday in January, more full than it's ever been before. And I think it's because of the, the year round excitement that that brings. And, um, we've been fortunate uh, to have uh, a lot of student athletes these last three, four years who are willing to put the work in and really put the time in and, and make sacrifices to improve themselves and, and to be part of high school athletics. And we hope it continues as, as much as it can. And obviously, you know, there's there's going to be down years ahead, but uh, we just, again, try to compete every day, every possession and get better. And I, I think that, with that mindset, um, high school athletic programs can be quite successful. Coach, you're talking with three Cavaliers. Here's my final comment. Uh, 
you know, I know the conferences are all set. You guys got a nice league there in the MMAC. I, I really uh, think there's some great uh, matchups and, and good rivalries. You know, Corona's in a different league. That's fine. But I think, you know, why don't you get with Jason, the AD over there, and schedule, like, periodically Chris. a big Saturday night matchup between Chesney and Corona. You know, the, those neighboring schools, I mean, it, it's a great, great rivalry with a, oh, you man. know, it's good matchup. No, those, I agree. Were the, those were the best games to play. Karana Durand, Karana Novadelsi, Chesanane, Chesanane, Owasso, of course. Yeah. Oh no, hundred percent agree. It was it was really cool. So what was it two years ago? Um, we 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 finally matched up with Karana in a district, and mm -hmm. uh, we got them over there. And then they came back and got us over here next the, the following year, just last season. And so, uh, but both both games just packed houses, mm -hmm. lots of energy. Uh, no, I, I agree. Those are the best games, especially, you know, they're only, I don't know, what is it, 10 miles 15, down the road, yeah. straight shot. So, and I, I love Rocky, and he's doing a great job with those guys as well. So, no, I, I'm i I'm all about it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely get them back on the schedule here for sure. All right, we'll take receipts. It's recorded here. <laughs> uh, Coach, I, we really appreciate the time. I know you I, you got a Monday night matchup, I believe, don't you, with uh, Saginaw Michigan Lutheran Seminary? Is yeah. that coming up? And then you got the districts that we've been talking about. You're hosting. You're 15 and 0. Keep it rolling. We'll be seeing you down the road. I'm sure we'll be over there for the districts. Uh, best of luck the rest of the way. And thanks for joining us here. Yeah, no, I, I, thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for doing your, your your high school segments. It's it's so awesome uh, when when guys are covering high school sports. I feel like that's making a resurgence as well. The the coverage of high school sports yeah. and that's do to podcasts like this and, and, and guys in the, in the newspapers and doing their thing too. So no, really appreciate you having me. Thank you guys. All right, coach. Thanks again. Go get to practice. All right. We'll do it. <laughs> Thanks guys. Jacobs insurance agency has served Shiawassee County and the surrounding areas since 1977. Just like three point podcasts, we've had three generations, Gary Jacobs, senior Gary Jacobs, the second Brian Jacobs and myself, Noah Jacobs serving our community with offices in Waterford and Owasso on M21, just West of home Depot. Stop in or go online to jacobsinsurance.com to get a quote or get your questions answered by our team. Jacobs insurance is a proud supporter of our local schools and the proud sponsor of the prep spotlight. Ensure everything, local, independent, and trusted. It's our family working together to protect yours. That's the Jacobs way. Next up on the Prep Spotlight, presented again by Jacobs Insurance Agency, we have the Langsburg head basketball coach, boys basketball coach, Tim Beebe. And uh, I'll just start it off, Coach. Uh, you know, last year you guys had a great run, made it all the way to the quarters, and this year off to another fantastic start to uh, how does it feel over there in the Berg? <laughs> uh, it's pretty good. We're, uh, you know, we're just was struggles early on. We had some guys injured. We weren't at full strength, so we had to fight through that. And we finally got our last guy back a couple weeks ago. And so now we're hopefully just starting to hit our stride. You guys have one damn good squad. We, we were able to see you play against Ovid Elsie earlier this year. Uh, you, kind of been an interesting season. You had some injuries at the start. Mm -hmm. You became the head coach only a week before – uh, the season started. Can you kind of take me back to those first maybe 48 hours when you realized, hey, I'm going to be the head coach this year, and how important is it to kind of imprint your stamp on the program, but also with that short of a time kind of just put the best foot forward and keep some of maybe the things that were working in the past uh, as well? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, going – I mean, the good thing is I was planning on being an assistant, so, you know, I was still connected to the program. It wasn't like I was, uh, you know, just – just came in there at the last right. second. So that really helped. And then uh, having, you know, Daniel Morrill's uh, endorsement for it, he, he really wanted me, you know, pushed me into, wanted me to do it. So um, that was a big thing with me is knowing that he, you know, wanted, wanted me there and wanted me to, you know, wanted to support me. Uh, that was very uh, helpful. So, and then knowing, you know, knowing all the kids having them last year and stuff was, so it made it pretty, a pretty seamless transition, I think for hopefully from their perspective, yeah. you know, for me, it was, it was still a lot, of, lot to do and a lot to process, but uh, yeah. So the first couple of weeks were really a, a whirlwind. <laughs> um, but, you know, having a team like, like the team we have made it a lot easier. So that's kind of yeah. how it went. Yep. Can you talk about, so last, last season, uh, you guys <clears throat> were two, two wins away basically from running the table, perfect season, state championship. You guys fell short in the quarterfinals. And, you know, magical run, a lot of guys coming back, obviously Xander being one of the big ones coming back all stater to this year's team. Can you talk about how 
your approach is to not let last year, you know, define this year's team. All right. Last year was cool. We, we built something. Maybe we learned some lessons, but this is a new season. How are we going to improve and hopefully finish with that state championship this year, as opposed to falling short? Yeah, we have emphasized that, you know, we, we don't want, they've done a good job of not just resting on their laurels. And obviously a lot of the guys we had last year are still playing big roles in this year's team, but so we've kind of done it more from a let, let's take a lot of pride in last year, but we also have to you know create our own identity um, as a team this year. And so, you know, that's what we've really focused on. You know, let's, let's just be good at the things we can control. You know, let's play good defense, let's rebound, and let's let's push the tempo. And so, um, you know, that's been that's been kind of our focus. So yeah, we've taken a lot of things we did last year, but we've we've also realized like we have different people doing different things. We're not. We're not playing a lot of full court man press, for instance, like we did last year because we don't have the, you know, the Jacob Essenbergs and Braden Thomases that we had last year. So, you know, that's just one thing that we're doing differently. Um, but, yeah, I think they've done a good job of just, you know, knowing we have to every night we have to go out and, and uh, create our own, you know, tempo. And and so they've they've been very good at that. Coach, uh, give us your little thumbnail sketch of your career. You know, you've had some coaching stops. <clears throat> You know, you're just tell us a little bit how you've made your way over to be the head coach of the Langsburg Wolfpack. Well, ironically, I was my first coaching stint was at Langsburg. I was a, you know, I student taught there and uh, I coached for Greg Mitchell for three years. Ah. So that's really where I kind of cut my teeth in the coaching ranks and learned a ton from him. You know, obviously a great mentor. Good mentor. Uh, and yeah, so um, and per, who knows, I might still be, be there, but I got a teaching job at Hazlitt. And then so then, of course, I started coaching. Uh, in their boys program there for several years uh, helping Rob pour it he took over the job about the same time that I I started teaching at Hazlitt so helped him for a while and then I kind of um, got asked if I was interested in, in coaching in the girls program there so I took that uh, you know job coach JV for a few years and took the varsity job there I think I was the head coach there for seven years and then uh, I got out of it for a while my kids were coming up um so it was busy time. I actually was coaching three sports. <laughs> My wife was like, uh, yeah, we're not going to do this forever. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so, so, um, and then we moved out to Langsburg just by chance. We wanted to live on a lake. And so we moved out here and, uh, you know, then I started, uh, coaching at Perry, which is the girls program there. Kind of a long story how I got hooked into that, but short, short version of it was Rob Port took the football job, asked me to come out and coach football with him out there. So I did. And then of course they, knew that I had a basketball background and got into the basketball program there. And then, uh, uh, started helping Doug Hurst just a little bit when I gave that up just for fun and here at Langsburg coaching the girls. And then, uh, Daniel asked me last year to switch over to the boys. And so that's what I did. Here I am. <laughs> you, you mentioned coach for it. Um, he used to coach against my dad way back when, when he was head coach at Corona and he was a Hazlitt. How, mm -hmm. How important was it for you to get him onto your staff this year? And how much has it helped having him, an experienced guy like him, on your staff as you're kind of going through those first few weeks of injuries and being a newly head coach? How much has he helped you guys? Oh, a ton. I mean, he's, you know, he, he, I, uh, we've worked together for years. You know, we went to high school together and, uh, and then, uh, you know, he was my assistant actually at Perry for a couple of years with the girls. So that was my first, my first move was to, you know, find somebody that I knew I could trust and, uh, yep. And, uh, you know, had a lot of the same beliefs, but, you know, we, we, we don't coach exactly the same, which I think is great. Um, we, we kind of, you know, ping pong off one another and, um, you know, his experience is, is, yeah, it's been very helpful. But another thing people don't know is he is actually the, the JV coach for, uh, Daniel, uh, three years ago. So when a lot of these guys, I think were freshmen, he, he coached for a season. So that was another thing is that we got, he knew a lot of the kids and the kids knew him. So that was another you know, key component of just kind of trying to make it as seamless of a transition as possible. Yeah, we know head head coaches are only as good as the the coaches they surround themselves with. You you, you hear that a lot. Um, that that's a very important part of being a successful head coach. Another part I think that you know we've talked about in this prep spotlight with a bunch of coaches and with ourselves. Another part of being successful is having a strong youth program. And I have a family in the Langsburg community. And two of my nephews, shout out to Jake and Jaden Mills, they play um, basketball at the youth level. They're, they're young, they're coming up. Um, and I know through talking to them and, and my family there that you guys really have a strong youth program. Can you talk about how important that is to you to have, 
you know, the youngsters coming up and learning how the value of hard work and your program, whether it's volleyball, soccer, basketball, you know, whatever sport it is. Yeah. I mean, I haven't gotten my hands into that as much just because of the timing of when I took right. over. Um, but, but I, you know, the kids, they come play at halftime of all of our games and they, you know, form a tunnel as we come out. And uh, mm-hmm. our, our uh, aux gym is always used by, you know, youth programs. So we get to see how, you know, how busy they are in there. And um, it, it's super important. And that, that started with Greg Mitchell. I mean, he, you know, I think he created that um, whole atmosphere of, you know, and kids now, they just take pride in the fact that they're a part of a program that's had some success through the years. And uh, yeah, I think it's huge. I mean, in all the other, you know, the other s- coaching stints I've had, that's been a big, uh, a big component of, you know, of being successful because you got that interest in the lower levels and the kids just, they just want to play, you know, I have to recruit kids to come out. Right. They're, just, they're always there. So, yeah. Yep. Well, you know, not to shortchange all the other programs over there at Langsburg, but the Wolfpack, Langsburg Wolfpack, it's a basketball school, man. There's no question about it. You got some big games coming up. Uh, you know, you're undefeated right now, but you got uh, Perry Tuesday night, and then there's a February 12th matchup against the Freeland Falcons. Jared uh, has a connection to that. <laughs> we all do, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What about the big games on your schedule? You looking forward to those? Uh, yeah, we are. We're pretty busy here. We had a makeup, so we've actually got three games in a row. We've got Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday this week. Oh, wow. Uh, and so it's kind of like a triple prep. Um, we're we're going to practice today uh, in the afternoon, a little while, just to shorten the prep. You know, give us a little more prep time. But uh, um, you know, Perry, yeah, they're 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 playing really well. They're well coached. Um, they've got some skilled kids, so you know that's not a game that we can. You know, the kids know it's a crosstown rival, so they'll be right. ready. Um, and then you know, Saranac, we haven't even played them yet, so we do have to do some. Ex, you know, extra work for that one, which is the good thing is they play the night before too. So it's not like anybody's got an advantage of being tired. Right. And then we've got Lansing Christian uh, on Thursday. So that's the only away game. So it helps having two home games, but yeah. And then, then of course it's Freeland and we've, we've watched them. Uh, we went and watched them play and we've got, you know, watched them on, on film and they're extremely talented. So yeah, that's going to be a, you know, that was one of our goals in the off season was to uh, get some teams on our schedule that we thought maybe could help us in the tournament. You know, because we felt like that was one thing our kids, not that they couldn't play with e course last year, they just they kind of right. they were kind of shocked, you know, at the pace and so forth. And so, you know, right away that got us in a, you know, we fell behind and then we played yeah. them even after they kind of realized, like, hey, we can play with these yeah. guys. So, yep. so that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to play some tough teams in the summer and um, get teams like Freeland on their schedule. So, yeah, we're looking forward to that one. I know you don't want to look ahead too much, but uh, that matchup, it, I can't wait. I've had it circled all year. Uh, it should, it, you guys love to push the pace. you got a guy that can you know, put up 40 points if he wants to. And Xander, they've got a stud. Sophomore Wilson Huckabee, who can fill it up. That should be a really fun matchup. I, and it's going to be really high-flying and high-paced. How do you? How, what have you seen from Freeland? And what is kind of going to be a key to kind of win that game? Well, I mean, they've got the two, the two big kids. You know, the one kid dunks it every time he gets it near the hoop right. so he's he jumps out of the gym so they've got him uh they've got the other big kid and then of course yeah the guard is uh, is really good now the you know i haven't really done a lot of prep for him just because right. you know don't want to disrespect our other opponents but it's just fun to look ahead and say what are we actually getting ourselves into so just kind of watching <laughs> if, watching some, a couple of their games but yeah that's going to be it should be a good one i mean i i just they've got they come at you from a lot of different angles and and i think we do the same well, final question for you, coach, from me anyway. Uh, you know, you got Xander Woodruff coming off a 42-point performance. We know he's the he's the key cog on your team, but we haven't had a chance to talk about some of your other players mm-hmm. and, and what they bring to the table. Why don't you uh, throw out a few names and, and how they contribute? Well, um, you know, Ty Randall, of course, is, uh, you know, he's getting back from he had Tommy John surgery, and so he didn't didn't play any football and he came back and we missed it. You know, we got him back this third game of the year. And so he's just starting to hit his stride and he's just a versatile, you know, player can shoot the ball, um, plays point guard for us, which is kind of weird. He's like six, two, but he just, he just sees the floor. He he gets guys, the ball, he rebounds. um, He does everything. I mean, he's just a, he is a, you know, definitely one of the most versatile players I think around the area for sure. So he's, he's a, he's kind of just a big key obviously. And then uh, Jackson Audrich is our, 
kind of a, I don't want to call him a poor man's big man, but he's, you know, he's not <laughs> super tall. He's probably six foot, six one, but the kid has a motor that just never stops. And he just, he does all, of, you know, all the dirty work for us gets, you know, doesn't care how many points he scores. He just, just wants to, you know, make an impact. And so he does, he's rebounds, defends, you know, can score if we need him to. Um, but he's been a, you know, a kid who didn't play much as a junior. And now he's, he, you know, he plays 30 minutes a game right. um, for us. So, those two guys, and then uh, you know we've got Cam Ballard, who's, who, who probably will be out this week as well. He's got a foot injury, and so mm. he didn't play on uh, Thursday. He's he's just another senior who shoots the ball well, plays good defense, really smart, intelligent. Um, you know, just a steady guy. And then uh, Mitchell George is our other starter, junior, and he's really come on. He's uh, plays. He's a really good athlete. You know, could score. He's been in double figures a few times for us this year. So, you know, those are our starters, but. We've got, you know, some bench guys as well that do a lot of good things for mm-hmm. us too. So, yep. Uh, real quick, I just want to ask one quick follow to that. You, you mentioned Ty Randall. <laughs> I love his game. Talk about a mismatch, whether, you know, he handles the ball so well. He's a big body. He's not afraid to be physical. Uh, I mean, like Ted kind of mentioned, I mean, Xander gets a lot of the pub, but he kind of almost seems like kind of the motor that keeps your guys' offense going. Uh, what more can you tell us about his game? Yeah, he's, um, I mean, that's what's helped. That's what's really helped us to kind of hit our stride here and, you know, is that he's just gotten in shape and he's gotten, uh, you know, he'd been being out of sports since, you know, this last spring, basically. So it's taken him a while. But, yeah, Ty is a is just a, you know, a phenomenal, versatile player. You know, he can, like I said, he can, he's a tough mismatch for teams. You can't, you put a little quick guy on him, he's going to take you down, down low. And right. if you put a, you know, a guy his size, he's quicker than most guys his size. And he's got a great perimeter game. Um, you know, he's, he's kind of the dying breed of, he's, he's a first right. team all conference, three sport athlete, you know, we yeah. don't get those kids. But, so I think his success in other sports also helps with his confidence. And, um, yeah, we weren't even sure we were going to have him this year because we didn't know if he was going to play or not. He was, if he was going to risk, you know, re-injuring that because he really wants to play college baseball. Right. And, um, I guess, you know, he just decided, you know what, I, I'm playing. So, um, and that's kind of tie, you know, he just, <laughs> he just does what he wants yeah. to do and he does it well. Good, good for him. Well, coach, we appreciate you taking the time out on this Sunday morning. Uh, I know you're going to have a busy week coming up. We just want to again th- say thanks for joining us and uh, uh, good luck the rest of the way. We'll probably see you in uh, districts or regionals. Absolutely. Thanks for having me on guys. It's fun. Uh, do okay. it again. If, if you ever need. All right. Need appreciate it. All right. Yep. Yeah. All right, guys, uh, we're going to finish up this uh prep spotlight, heavy podcast, at least this portion, a few other highlights. And again, thanks to the coaches, Matt Weigel and Langsburg head coach, Tim Beebe. Interesting conversations with both of them. Speaking of the Chesanine Indians and coach Matt Weigel, they uh, downed Weberville 60 to 47 this week. Mason struck at 29 in that one. And then the number nine Indians followed up with a big win over Montrose last Friday night on Z92.5 to improve to 15 and 0. Struck hit for uh, 25 in that one. Nate Ferry and Matt Volk had 11 each. They have Saginaw Valley Lutheran on Monday night this week. Langsburg, man, they continue to roll 65 to 45 in a, you know, a matchup against Fowler. That's a very good team. A 20 point win. Xander Woodruff hit for 42, a career high, and they have three big games this week, including uh, a big matchup with Freeland. I mean, I know Jared, you've been promoing this all season long <laughs> you gotta be well, our three-point podcast reporter at that one man yeah i i'm i i yeah i've, I've had it circled man it should be an awesome matchup i mean you projecting ahead langsbury's gonna be undefeated freeland's gonna have one loss right it's a fun matchup that i wish we had more of i mean you threw out the idea to coach weigel of you know corona and chestening more of those games it's yes. it's just a fun matchup that's really yeah. two very fun teams that can put the ball through the rim so i'm just i'm excited to watch it and it should well, be a and, great crowd at freeland yeah oh yeah the crowd's gonna be great i mean that gym i remember you you took a picture of freeland's gym just just a cool classic high school gym yep. um but coach bb talked about it you know the team maybe last year in the quarterfinals was you know maybe a little shell shocked when they went up against the team like E-Course. E-course yeah, so yeah. you need to schedule teams like this. You know, if you have right. legitimate state championship aspirations, you know, schedule some of these teams that maybe are you might see in the quarterfinals or in the playoffs. So you know your your guys are ready to go. 
Absolutely. Well, we talked about they got they got Perry coming up this week. Perry now 10 and 5 after downing Bath 56 39. Joey McGraw Allen 17 points and eight assists in that one. New Lothrop down Byron 61 47. Kevin Unanx had uh, 24, including nine of nine free throws. And the Corona Cavaliers saw Rocky, the head coach, last night at the big event. They down Kersley by 10 as Braylon Socha hit for 19. In girls basketball, Corona down uh, Kersley. 49 to 36. It's been kind of a struggle for the Cavalier ladies, but Gracie Termier had 15 to lead all scores in that one. And how about the Wasso girls basketball team? Pretty solid season. Scotty Ball Dooley and Danica Dwyer each hit for 20 in a Wasso 64 36 FML crossover W against Holly. So some good basketball being played out there by both the boys and the girls. And it's coming down to the stretch, right? Districts around the corner. Absolutely. <laughs> And, and te- I mean, we harp on I harp on it every week, but it, it's the funniest thing every week. As soon as you retired, what? why is there this influx of talent, man? In basketball <laughs> and football, we got undefeated teams left and right. I mean, I know. come on, I, you got to think about it, right? Yeah, I, they can give all the credit to me for retiring, right? <laughs> <laughs> they, they, wanted, they wanted Casey to have some really good yeah. games to call. Yeah, you know, it is, and, and just a, a, a side note on that, it is very cool that uh, Casey has been able to step into some successful programs and fun broadcasts. That's right. a great way to start your career, man. It keeps you yeah. fired up. Also, a couple quick notes in wrestling at the MMAC meet. New Lothrop had a couple of weight champions in Blake Wendling, Jack Kohanic, and Colt Simons. Actually, three winners. Ovid Elsie had first place winners in Talon Parsons and Cole Workman. And Duran also a pair of winners in Cam Bacchus and Drew Allward. Chessonine's Quint Everett ruled at 126. The Wolfpack also won the... Uh, Langsburg won the uh, CMAC meet with five champions, and Perry's Jackson Porter picked up win number 100 in the 126-pound final. Uh, the Castle game of the week coming up this Friday in boys' basketball over at the house that Frank built, Clio at Corona. Cavaliers are going to be looking for a little revenge in that one as they took it on the chin against the Mustangs a little earlier this season. That'll do it for the Prep Spotlight brought to you by Jacobs Insurance Agency. We certainly appreciate all their support. And we'll take a look at a little sports potpourri to wrap up this podcast right after this. All right, guys, not a lot to talk about uh, because of the week between the Super Bowl. And I don't know about you guys, but I have <laughs> no. lost complete interest in the Super Bowl. Yep. Maybe it'll it'll pick up this week maybe it'll pick up when i do show up in vegas but uh i'm still having that hangover on the lions loss i don't See, know about you guys i kind of you know what's funny man and this is what sucks about recording a podcast we recorded that podcast right after the game happened yep. um a few days later I, I'm, I'm i'm like looking forward to next year i can't believe it it's like i'm out of the next season ben johnson's back yeah they got all this cap space i can't wait to see what brad holmes does in the draft Right. I'm in. I'm back in. I'm, I'm ready to be heard again come next fall. But you're right. <laughs> it's uh, the Superman. Just think if we were pro- promo in a Super Bowl right now, this podcast oh would be three hours long. So yes, it would. still a bummer, but a lot, of, a lot to be excited about that I couldn't see, you know, fresh off that tough loss. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely not. Anytime I see the show's preview in the Super Bowl and you see the highlights of the 49ers versus the Lions, I almost I just turn away. I do I mean, too. Yeah. Yeah, when it when it comes time, obviously, yeah, Ted, when you get to Vegas and everyone's out there excited for the Super Bowl, okay, yeah, cool. You know, yep. Super Bowl is always fun. We'll we'll talk about it, of course. But right now, no, I couldn't care less about about the Super Bowl. But the Ben Johnson news, yes, yep. that that kind of brought some huge. It, it kind of helped put put the the NFC Championship loss, you know, to bed a little bit because if he would have left, uh, it w- it would have just twisted the blade a little bit of like, man, this. This does feel like really? this was yeah. the year that we needed yeah. to do it. He comes back. I don't know about you guys. It almost feels like a last dance type of thing because we don't have to get into all this. We've we've talked about it at nauseum. Jared Goff only has one year left on his deal. Is this? I know. I know. We said it's not. They're not going to say like prove it. We're giving you one more chance. Go prove if you. But are they looking at it as like Goff's coming back for a year? You know that he's going to want to prove that he deserves that big time extension. They've got all these, all this talent coming back. Frank Ragnall, the center has said that he's going to take this off season and like contemplate his future, whether he wants to put his body through another season or if it's time for him to hang it up, is he going to say, is, is Jared Goff going to talk to him and say, Hey man, uh, give me one more season. 
you know, like come back. We got Ben Johnson coming back. You know, like I don't know if you guys are getting that vibe of like because it does feel like whatever happens with golf, if Ben Johnson does leave, you know, some other free agents and stuff might go elsewhere for bigger paydays. It feels like this next year might be like when it's like it's all in. Ben Johnson is here. We don't know how long we're going to have him. Go all in on next year. Draft picks. They got, like you said, Jared, all that cap space. Go sign some guys. Next year is the year. My my dad basically held me at gunpoint to mention this on the pod. Uh, <coughs> said, said this is more for you because this is more your era. He compared it to the 70s Steelers where they struggled for a long time. They had the Franco Harris, uh, you know, immaculate reception in the first round of the playoffs. Uh, and then they finally kind of bounce back and eventually I, I'm probably missing some things along the way. Is there a comp to be made to that Steelers team back in the seventies? There, there certainly could be because they have put the team together and the, and the Steelers from those days, they had a couple of, of years where they drafted, like, I think one year they got four hall of famers in the first couple of rounds. And you think about that and the lions, let's face it, Brad Holmes, his draft, his drafting of players has been flawless despite people questioning it at the time it's paid off it, there yeah. i think there's a pretty good similarity to the way the way it worked with the steelers i hope it pays off the same way four Super Bowls right. would be kind of nice <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh you know they had a lot of good pieces on those teams for sure with a good coach some similarities there i guess you know they had terry bradshaw he was he put up some numbers but he wasn't like uh all pro type of yeah. a quarterback, you know, right. kind of similar to golf, maybe. I mean, definitely a better arm. Yeah. <laughs> Bradshaw had a rocket, but uh, <laughs> there are your dad pretty wise on that comment. It could be <laughs> similar. But, well, I, the thing is, like, yeah, I like, I think there could be some sort of a last dance, Matt, but I'm almost like the fact that we got through it was almost how I felt about Harbaugh, where it felt like two years ago, once he said he's back, like, okay, he's in for the long haul. We know how that turned out. NCAA right. sanctions might have affected that as well. Yeah. But I think with Ben Johnson, from the reports I'm hearing, he's not a very good interview. He's got a really high asking price to be a head coach. I, like the way I look at it, I think we might be able to hold on to this guy until we make that Super Bowl, which speak it right. into existence. We're going to get it done over the next five years. So I think this team is kind of going to stay intact. I mean, Ben Johnson was the big key cog. If he leaves, who knows what other staff members he takes? It's right. basically restarting from scratch. So it can't be overstated how important it was to keep him there and keep you know, the PJ Fleck boat rolling. Yeah. yeah. And I do think, you know, because they have so much cap space, I mean, they're going to have to extend golf for a couple of years. I mean, there's yeah. no getting around it, you know, whether it breaks the bank, I don't think it will break the bank, but he's going to get over 40 mil. There's no doubt about it. And that still leaves them with a fair share of cap space for some of these other signees. Now you just caught me off guard. I know, I know Ragnow has been banged up, but he's actually been talking about possibly retiring already. Really? Yeah. At, after the wow. game, there, there's a quote. I mean, I, I could find it or I, I, we might've retweeted oh, I believe it. Maybe, you. <laughs> but yeah. He, he said, I mean, I mean, we talked about it. the injury. He was like toe, back, shoulder, right. knee, ankle. Yeah, groin. I mean, he, he was out there on basically one leg. Yeah. Um, you know, was it, in the moment he said that as his body is falling apart, right. you know, maybe he takes a month off and he feels good. All right, let's get this going. But, you know, he's been in the league for a little while and maybe yeah. he is thinking like, I actually want to have, I think in the quote, he said that, you know, he wants to be the best husband and father and stuff oh. for the rest of his life. So maybe he's thinking, do I want to be limping around or in a wheelchair right. the rest of my life? Or is this a good time to step away? So you know, you would think maybe with a few weeks off, maybe they're on vacation right now. Right. You know, he he's healing up. He'll he'll be like, all right, let's let's get this thing going. But oh, um, well, we'll respect his uh, his uh, decision. But I right. hope he comes back. He's, well, he's, he's right. good. Yeah. Here, yes, we need. He's, I think he's got one more year in him. Here's the thing. What and just let's just real quick because we don't need to talk about the draft right now. But honestly, I would. Uh, people are throwing out. Oh, we need a cornerback. We need a D lineman. Let's go sign those guys. In my yeah. opinion, let's like strengthen our strengths in the draft. Let's draft some offensive linemen yeah. first couple of rounds. That's yeah. the way I look at it. And that must be shocking to hear. I'm usually the excitement pick. No, let's keep strengthening this offensive line and let's keep pounding people. I love yeah. it. So yeah. that's what I want to see come draft time. Looking ahead real quick. What are you guys looking for, for draft? I, I'm kind of with you. Well, so like Jonah Jackson and Graham Glasgow are free agents. And then there's the Ragnall situation. So Hopefully right now, you know, obviously, like you said, Ted, respect his decision. It, you know, it's his, his decision, his life. Um, hopefully he lets the Lions know sooner rather than later. So yeah. if he hangs it up, then yes, they need to address 
that position. I think they need to re-sign Glasgow and Jonah Jackson. Yeah. They're just really good. Glasgow, he stepped in at center when Ragnall was out. He would also play guard. That's just a dude you got to bring back. You bring him back. You to. know, even if just for depth, bring him back. And then, yeah, you draft the, those depth pieces at O line because we saw this year. Offensive linemen always kind of get dinged up. I mean, yes, they they can battle through every injury yeah. possible, <laughs> but you need you need depth on right. offensive line. You just do in the NFL, and that's the Lions' strength. This isn't a shot at golf, but he is better in a clean pocket, like sure. like most quarterbacks are. Every quarterback is better, but like no he's doubt. much better with no pressure. Yep, uh, he is um, incredible, like way better with no pressure. So yes, strengthen that offensive line because you got two stud running backs. And, you know, you want to protect golf. So I'm with you. I think, yes, you obviously need to address the defense big time. But I would not be mad if they added an offensive lineman to keep that, you know, Panay Sewell, right. De- Decker, Ragnow, keep that the strength of the team. And then, yeah, use the money to sign some veteran, a corner. You know, maybe you can get someone to help Hutch on the D-line. Um, but, yeah, I- I'm with you. You know, strengthen that O-line. Yeah, that's all good. And then I, there's one uh, one guy coming out of the draft that would help the uh, help the Lions. He's a DB. His first name's Kool Aid. He fits yeah, in from, perfect. Blue Kool Aid, baby. Get him on board. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say Mike Sanders still. I thought that was where you were going with that. No, but yeah, Kool Aid McGinstry, li- man. I can I see li- it now. Yeah, I could live with Sanders though. He, but- he's he's pretty solid. He is. He's a good player, and he's a proven winner for sure. So I'll be curious where he goes. Kool Aid, though, would would he? He's a stud at Alabama, and we've had success drafting Alabama players. Obviously, yeah. the one crazy thing I don't know if you guys you guys have seen this. There is just there's so many you know with sports. There's just crazy stats all over the place. One of the craziest stats: an Alabama player has never scored in the Super Bowl. Really? Never. Never. And you know you you think about quarterbacks: Joe Namath, Jalen Hurts, and you know there's other ones. But they're they're throwing touchdowns. They've never like scored. That's also, yeah. So Jalen Hurts ran in a two point conversion is what I'm thinking of. Right, a touchdown. Wow, that's just crazy. So like you know you always say like yeah you want to draft those Alabama players, Jamison Williams, Jameer Gibbs. You know obviously Brian Branch on defense. But are we like jinxing ourselves by drafting Alabama <laughs> players because they've never scored in the Super Bowl? Hmm. Or are we are we going to be the ones that break that streak? Let's just Not get a, to the damn Super Bowl. Right, right. <laughs> Not a good omen for Jameer Gibbs is what that right. is. Um, hey, Jared, I got a question for you before, yeah. before we get off the topic of football in the Super oh, Bowl. Oh, sorry, real, real quick. Sorry. Yeah. It's it's if they've graduated from Alabama also because oh. Jalen Hurts graduated from Oklahoma. Gotcha. So that, that was one of the other things. All right. Good clarification there. <laughs> no, I was going to say, Jared, since I am going to be out in Vegas, uh, you got to send me a tip or two. Uh, at the sports book, you know, maybe a maybe a solid bet that you have, you know, let me know. Yeah, I'll take a look. I, I you know, there, you I'm know, there's going to be gambler, man. Is, there's is, going to be a bunch around Taylor Swift. Oh um, yeah, I would. think How many so. times is Taylor Swift shown on TV and you know, all those? You know, since so, you brought it up, what do you get? What do you think? You know, we don't need to get into it like everybody else has, but man, it it just has become way overblown man it's just yeah. kelsey's girlfriend for god's sakes get the camera off it's awesome. at this point I, I don't get the hatred it's i don't either psychopath people hate on everything man yeah. and give it even like acting like they're like the majority is is silly yeah. um it's awesome i mean i'll speak from personal experience man I'm, I'm a big taylor swift fan i've said that on this pod before but sure when travis kelsey makes a play my first thought is what is Taylor doing? <laughs> so I love the cutaways. I like every time he makes a catch, I want them to cut away. All they right. definitely dialed it back and yeah. um, they showed her for like 20 seconds during the Grammy promo and you could tell she was uncomfortable with it. Yep. So I don't want her to be uncomfortable, but I love it. It's an yeah. awesome story. Awesome. It's Travis Kelsey's the great dude. He's got a podcast. Uh, it's yep. funny following it all the way from the beginning where he made a friendship bracelet for her at a concert. Next thing you know, they're dating. It's awesome. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It's also like, you know, she is in one of the biggest mega star superstars in the world right now. So, yeah, if she's dating one of the players on the teams, it's kind of a big deal. It's yeah. like it's any other sport when there's that celebrity connection. Think about when it's a Knicks game at Madison Square Garden, they always show Spike Lee and all the other ones. When it's a Lakers game, they always show all the the celebrities, Jack the Kardashians Jack yeah. and Denzel, Nicholson. you know, all the superstars at at um well now it's crypto.com arena right right um, you know th- so they do that all the time this isn't yeah. anything new you know yeah maybe people are noticing it because every time kelsey makes a play they cut to her but i've seen people literally break down how long a football game was on tv you know it's three and a half hours three hours 45 minutes whatever and she's on screen for like 20 seconds 
Right. It's really not that big of a deal. Now people are just making it a big deal. You know, could they cut to her less? Sure, I guess. But you know what? She's got, uh, Jared, you might know, she's probably got like 500 million followers on Instagram, however many million followers on TikTok. Like she is maybe the biggest mega star out there right now. So yeah, they're gonna they're gonna show her on TV. Yeah. Well, they saw how much how much like money she's generated for the NFL. It's like I could have swore I saw like three hundred plus million. It's like (laughs) well, I don't get the haters. I like you were like you said, Jared. If she's uncomfortable with so much coverage, that's one thing. Okay, maybe they need to back it up, but it doesn't bother. It certainly doesn't hurt my viewing of the game, you know, at all. Who cares? And I thought it was kind of cool to see her down on the field afterward with Kelsey. You know, that looked like that was. True love, you know, it, it didn't look like it was staged. A lot of people thought it was all staged at the beginning, but they're together. It's a fairy tale it story. It is. It's pretty cool. All right. Um, before we were, I was, you got anything else, Jared? You no, to I'm going to segue to something I don't really want to talk about, but okay. um, we, we got to bring it up. Michigan, Michigan State. Yep. I'll be honest. I fell asleep uh, about midway through the second <laughs> half. I woke up, Michigan's down 20. What the hell just happened? Yeah, what, because what they, were up like, they were up like, they were up at halftime. Like, what a yeah. sad. I mean, we pro, we didn't even know what the hell was going on. We Matt, you were the only one that knew the game was the next day last week when we recorded. <laughs> Peacock app streaming nine o'clock start. Both teams in in a weird spot. Yep. Just a sad reality we're in. I I, I we don't need to harp on the Jawan train. I just miss the days of college, the golden era of college basketball. You know, 20, 2000, 2009 to two thousand eighteen. That ten year run. We were really spoiled in the state with yeah. two basically top five teams. Year in, year out. Uh, I'm, I'm just reminiscing on the past. It's just sad where we're at right now in this rivalry. You know, and, and looking at it as a as a TV executive, maybe making decisions. How I don't know how it all comes together when they pick games. But if Michigan would have a decent team this year, how could that game not be primo CBS? You know, with the top crew, Izzo going for number 700 on his 69th birthday. But no, it's delegated to Peacock at nine o'clock on a weeknight really weird it was just weird i mean to to be fair those those decisions are made before the season yeah so it was it was decided to be on peacock you know months ago and they didn't know months ago that that was going to be number 700 true you know, right it's, i'm not trying to argue with well, you cuz you are you're making a good point but you know it, they they could maybe I'd, I'd be curious what the contract deals are. Like if they could have pulled the strings and been like, Hey, this is a big deal. Let's pull it from the peacock. But that, that might be a sign thing. Like, no, yeah. that, it's on the peacock well, no matter what. Probably. Um, if they're it's, putting NFL playoff games on the peacock app, I mean, Michigan, Michigan state, I, I'm a diehard Michigan fan. I couldn't bring myself to watch the whole damn game. Right, so right. it's like, it, that is where that game deserved to live. With those two <laughs> shitty brothers. You know what? I'm going to say that that's where it deserved to live. Hopefully it made a less people watch it because my God, it's tough to watch. Yeah. A crazy, a crazy behind the scenes inside baseball thing. I know we're starting to run long on this, but sometimes people are interested in this. A yeah. weird thing with with these new games streaming on the Peacock app. So, you know, most games, you know, Jared, you're probably learning this stuff too. Most games, whether it's on Fox, whether it's on FS1, CBS, whatever network, Valley Sports, whatever network it is, mm-hmm. ESPN or probably Fox, CBS, whatever network needs highlights from a game that is on a different network you get an actual feed of that game, a fiber or through the satellite, you get the feed right. that comes in. So you get true high quality HD, everything, what you are seeing on TV, ESPN gets for sports center for their highlights, you know, whatever these Peacock games, they, they don't have the technology yet to get that. So mm. the only way that ESPN can get those highlights off Peacock is basically, it's called web scraping is basically screen recording the Peacock app. Right. So that's why some of these Peacock app games, if you watch the highlights, you know, you're like, man, is, is my TV like Fuzzy. buffering? Like, why is that not super clear? So it's just kind of like we were talking about at work during that game. We're watching it. And, you know, when we're watching it on TV, we're watching the Peacock record. And we're like, how did they not, when they went all in on this Peacock app for games, figure out like we need a fiber or we need to be able to send this up to the bird, to, to the satellites. Right. So we can actually get a high def feed of this because – this looks it really is weird. bad. <laughs> it's unbelievable. They don't have like a, the setup the same way. Whatever how how you get stuff from CBS, you would or is it NBC? NBC yeah. would be the same way through like Peacock app. That is kind yeah. of hard. But like yeah. funny little kind of uh, like factoid. Yeah, when I'm watching highlights, I, I'm gonna be paying attention to that now for sure. Whatever. It's, it's funny too because so it's literally someone that sets up that record. And when we started watching it at work, 
um, you know, the little mouse, your little, your little pointer. In the mouse. Corner. It was on the screen. <laughs> yeah. We're like, we're like, Hey, whoever's doing this, man, move, Gotta move, move the it. mouse, man. <laughs> it's just so goofy, but no, yeah. Michigan real quick. Mi- Michigan's terrible. I mean, yeah. They're so bad. Juwan. So yesterday we're recording Sunday morning, Saturday, they lost to Rutgers. One of the worst teams in the country. Michigan is the last team in the big 10. Had a they're 15 terrible. point lead. Had a 15 point lead. So 22 games this season. They've led at halftime in 15 of the 22 games. They've only won seven games. Wow. They are so the stat they they are in scoring margin in the first half. They're like 99. So they're a top 100 team in scoring margin in the first half. That's pretty good. You know, okay. Second half scoring margin 307. They fall apart in the second half. Why? I mean, Why do you that, think that coaching. is? Coaching. coaching I, I think it i think it's a combination all the above whatever about to say it's all Not the above. shape coaching i don't know if it's out of shape or just that the bench is so bad that the starters uh-huh. are gas the, the starting five michigan's starting five is actually pretty good they're they're a solid starting five their bench is bad i don't know if that's yeah. Jawan's not playing them enough i don't know how they prepare in <laughs> practice who knows what that is but yeah i think when you get to the second half the starting five is just gassed and they lose. They lose mm. all these leads. I mean, they were up by 15 at half, and they end up losing by 10 to Rutgers. That's a 25-point swing. I mean, it's just insane. Juwan, after the game yesterday in the presser, I don't know if you guys saw any of the clips or tweets or anything. Yeah, I, I did. He's basically calling out his starters and saying, yep. like, he's saying, you know, people are questioning his program. He's saying, I've been to an Elite Eight. I've been to a Sweet 16. My program works. Not a good Which take. is true, <laughs> but you were also coaching <laughs> Beeline's players. So, like, is it your system or w- did you have a good thing going with Beeline's players and you just, Oh yeah. I don't know. You know? And then he's saying like, maybe I need to start playing the walk-ons because I know they care. So are you saying that the starters aren't really bought in? I mean, it's starting to sound like you don't want to go as far as saying the locker room is lost, but seems like know, it, man, it, it, it's not looking good. I don't, people are saying fire drawn. They're never going to fire. Like, listen to that fire Jawan Howard. They're never firing, just like they would never know, fire. But it would be like a mutual parting of ways. Like it's, right. it'd be the same as Jim Harbaugh. Like after that 2020 season when they went two and four, they're never going to fire Jim Harbaugh. But there might come a point where Ward Manuel they go to Juwan and they're like, "Listen, man, I, I don't know what you want us to say. We're not going to make the headline that we're firing Juwan Howard, but you know, come on, man, because right. it, it's you know this is getting pretty bad. Like this is working. getting bad." Ted, why did why you had a visceral reaction to what he said at the post game presser? Why do you hate it so much? I just I didn't. First of all, that kind of comment should be made in the locker room only. If you if you really feel that way, to me it seems like he's deflecting the blame off himself and putting it on the players. And I think that's a bullshit move by a coach. That's my opinion. Well, it's comical. I mean, Matt, you said it. It's like, dude, you basically just. We know that Sweet 16 was kind of bullshit. The easiest draw I've ever seen in my lifetime when they made that Sweet 16 his whatever third year. That Elite Eight team, we remember the kind of the questionable last eight minutes of that game against UCLA. Again, that, they that, should have won. That should have been a Final Four team. That should have yeah, been they absolutely. were loaded, man. <laughs> they were so loaded. Franz Wagner is a, probably an NBA All Star within the next couple of years. NBA players all around him, experienced, well coached, could shoot, could score. To ha- to talk about those two teams as like basically your crowning achievement as a coach, people who know know how much of a joke that really is that he's right. saying that. Yeah, I think I, I maybe said this last week. I think he belongs in the NBA. I think he's just an NBA guy. I don't know if right. his his philosophy systems work in college. Maybe the recruiting. You know, hopefully this doesn't ruin his co- coaching career. You know, because I would assume he wants to coach for a long time, but. It just seems like maybe he's more an NBA guy. It just doesn't seem like it's working. No. Yeah. Well, he has to turn it around in a hurry. Is it a given that he'll be back next year no matter what? I don't think so. I mean, he had the offseason heart surgery, so he wasn't there all offseason and even at the beginning of this season. So I wonder if that – if they'll give him like, all right, I know this year was weird. (laughs) Right. Let's give you one more year. Will you have a whole offseason? Right. I don't know. But well, that's where I'm that's my point I'm leading up to. If he comes back for another year, it's it's got to be way improved next year. You got to make the tournament. I mean, it's yeah. like you can't miss a tournament again. No, no. Yep. I'm yeah, I, 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 I've been out. Man, I think you're right. I don't know if he will officially get fired, but I think they're going to use this heart surgery. You know, too stressful. Time to step away. Focus on my family. I, I wouldn't be surprised if that comes this offseason. 
Yeah. Especially, you know, he still has one son. Jace is on the team. Maybe once he's off the team, maybe it's like, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> Very I mean, possible. to be to, we're, we don't talk about the Spartans much, but they're they're fighting for their tournament life. They're but they're probably gonna they'll turn around. We know what they're in do. pretty they'll, good shape right now. I think. Yeah, they'll if make they, the tournament. Yeah, they should. It's they're gonna, fourteen and eight, six and five in the Big but, Ten. Yeah, yeah, but here's the thing, man. I mean, preseason number five, they're so goddamn old. They're older than the D- Detroit Pistons, for God's sakes. <laughs> what the hell's going on? Like, well, don't, I don't blame it on Izzo. And some like Izzo, the way he coaches, man, maybe it just doesn't quite connect with these guys. I mean, think about the do- quote unquote dogs he's had. You know, Draymond Green, Team Cleaves. Like, Denzel I don't Valentine. see guys responding to that on this team. It's like, come on. Like, if I'm a state fan, I'm not pointing at Izzo. I'm pointing at these guys, dude. Yeah, you guys should be a freaking like twenty and five team right now, and you're you're stumbling. It, it's just it'd be infuriating if I was Spartan. Yeah, but they let's look at. We've talked about it many, many times. They're right now poised in position to go on a run. They have all that experience. You know, they've had they've had some tough games, but uh, I wouldn't want to play them in the tournament. No, 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 you never do. Izzo always shows up in the tournament. But right. regardless, you shouldn't be like holding out hope for a, for a you know underdog you know Cinderella run. This well, should be a premier team. Okay, yeah. that's fair. So, yep. And they brought in a number one recruiting class. I, I don't know. We can that's a pod, probably an episode for two weeks from now, talking yeah. about Tom Izzo, but what you gotta look around at him, these players. I don't know what what the hell's going on over there. You you wonder if and it's this isn't a shot at Tom Izzo, but you wonder if you know the old school message, and this isn't a shot at today's kids, you know, it's not if if that old school message, if it doesn't hit the same with today's generation as it did with the Draymond greens, the Denzel Valentines, you know, the early two thousands teams, the Flintstones, you know, again, not, not taking a shot at Izzo style. You just wonder if he's been in it for what over 20 years, you know, well, quite a while. It seems Maybe. like a team that, sorry, I'm not trying to, but to add to your point, it seems like a team that doesn't have a leader. You know, it doesn't have a Cassius Winston, doesn't have right. maybe, maybe Hauser. I mean, we kind of brushed off them losing him last year, but he was experienced, was knew huge. how to play basketball, really came alive in the tournament. I mean, I wonder how much of uh, how much they're missing that guy. Just an experienced, level-headed guy that is a good locker room guy. Yeah, hundred. They're missing him big time, man. Yeah. I, I'm still surprised he didn't come back. You know, with some sort of nil package, made some good money for a final year. But yeah, I think that's a key factor that they are missing. You know, a guy could drain the big shot when it needed to be done. There's who are you going to call on nowadays? You know, yeah. it's a crapshoot. All right. Well, you know what, fellas, it's been kind of a fun number three hundred. <laughs> Been a little long, but that's okay. We've had some fun with it. Had some high school coaches on. It's, it's I'm been fun sorry. to get together. I gotta throw out one more thing. We'll keep it tight. We'll keep it quick. One, okay. I, you guys are gonna appreciate this one. All right. R.I.P. Carl Weathers. What a oh, legend. Yeah. Oh, really yeah. was. Yeah. But, you know, normally these celebrity deaths, they don't. I don't really have much of a reaction to it. But he just seemed like an all-time guy. Great actor. Not afraid to make fun of himself. All-time guy. When you see the interviews, I mean, his character. My favorite one, Chubbs Peterson. <laughs> iconic. Really was iconic. So I just wanted to give him a shout out. That's a guy that spanned a few different generations. Yep. Uh, and really, really just sad to see him go. Yeah. I mean, he was the the Rocky franchise is my favorite series of movies ever. And, you know, obviously Apollo Creed and those we saw. I don't know if you guys saw the video that Sylvester Stallone posted oh, yeah. after the past. I Great. mean, it, it almost like hits you. You know, him and Sylvester Stallone were probably about best friends, you know. Sly basically said Apollo is he credits Apollo with basically his whole career, you right. know, or well, Carl Weathers, Carl, right? Um, you know, and then obviously at Chubbs and then Predator, and he seemed to always like pop up, he'd make a cameo in like random movies, whether as himself or right, you know, as, as like a character. So, yeah, just an <laughs> awesome guy. And you know, that it was a sad one to hear about. Yep, he'll be missed for sure. All right, let's close it out now, boys. We want to thank all our partners, including Memorial Healthcare's Wellness Center. You know, talk to a rep or go online, see what kind of discounts are available for memberships. Get healthy, get in shape. Details at memorialhealthcare.org. Also want to thank our partners, AZ Branding Solutions, Jacobs Insurance Agency, Corey Shook and Associates Real Estate Services, uh, Nelson House Funeral Homes, Rivals Tap House and Grill, and Success Group Mortgage and Servicing. Again, special thanks out to Chesanine's boy co- boys basketball coach, Matt Weigel and the Langsburg head coach, Tim Beebe, for joining us. It was a lot of fun here today. Look forward to talking to you next time. Peace and love, everybody. Be kind. Thanks for listening. Are you ready to take your brand to the next level? Look no further. 
Introducing AZ Branding Solutions, where we help grow your brand from A to Z. At AZ, we're committed to helping businesses and organizations like yours reach new heights. Our full service print and digital branding agency is your one-stop destination for all things branding. Need a stunning web or graphic design that captures your essence? We've got you covered. Want captivating social media content that engages your audience? Done. And that's not all. We're experts in video production and photography, ensuring your brand tells a compelling visual story. Plus, we specialize in screen printing and embroidery, turning your brand into wearable art that speaks volumes. Whether you're a startup or an established business, AZ is here to transform your brand dreams into reality. Ready to grow with us? Partner with AZ today and experience the difference. Visit our website at www.az.co or give us a call at 1-844-360-AZEE. AZ Branding Solutions, where your success begins.